Hey guys, back with another video. This time, I'll be getting ready for the Arts in the Dark parade that takes place on State Street in Chicago. So my look for today is zombie cheerleader. It's spooky season. <laughs> we're gonna get spooky. And today, what we're really gonna talk about is something really scary. <laughs> ableism. Okay, it's not really ableism, but let's just get it out there that there's a lot of able-bodied people making decisions on behalf of people living with disabilities. I mean, I acknowledge my own privilege in that I don't usually have to think about accessibility for myself, but I grew up with a mom who requires accommodations, so I'm familiar with the frustrations that people experience when something may be inaccessible. Imagine you just want to go out with your friends and it seems daunting because you don't feel like you'll have anywhere to sit Maybe it's a long walk and you have mobility issues now It's not only a physical implication, but it's creating social barriers, too. That's just not fair Things are getting serious, right? Like this is a real problem in a multitude of communities The Interaction Design Foundation described that the World Health Organization revealed about 15% of the world's population has some form of disability. Let's just, for the sake of making this easy to explain, for like business perspective, you're leaving out a solid percentage of your audience if you refuse to consider their needs. And then from a civic media perspective, it's simply unethical. And for web design, from what they're describing, it doesn't even seem technically difficult to comply. It's literally just a consideration that the designer should make. Like, avoiding certain layouts such as tables to ease navigation, avoiding flash for people who have vision sensitivity, or providing captions and subtitles. I just want these to be even. I'm getting ready for a show show, you know, and like it needs to look good. I'm gonna cut the crease eventually, so this is gonna get intense. Most of these features are already built in to platforms and eventually it's gonna be a standard. For my group's project, Dos Patrias and Un Solo Corazon, Accessibility features, as described by IDF, are already built into the platforms. We will be utilizing, like, are the closed captions working in this video? Because they should be. I'm gonna be a huge hypocrite if I make this whole video about accessibility and like, my video itself is not even accessible. Dang. I'm canceling myself. I am canceling myself. Cancel culture is coming for me and it's what I deserve. Regardless, we'll want to use features like text to voice in multiple languages to ensure the website content is readable for all. I could see my group using this component in our research when we're doing an analysis or a case study on a specific school. We'll want to see what students are currently working with in terms of accessibility. Honestly, I think accessibility is missing in the discourse period. At least in the discourse that I'm exposed to rights for individuals with disabilities, they really only come up when there's a tragic incident or there's a viral fundraiser or GoFundMe for someone who's struggling. I think a lot of it does have to do with the number of people who are living with disabilities that feel invisible. I think the majority of people don't realize how substantial this group is or the number that it affects. Any civic media project should really follow these guidelines. They're provided. A lot of it involves listening to the specific needs of members of that group. Not to be corny, but have some compassion. The whole point of a civic media project is you're trying to help people, I hope. I don't know. Keep in mind before you publish that website with a million flash photos and strobes. Sure, maybe that'll get more attention on your page, but at what cost? Aside from online accessibility, a civic media project should improve accessibility in real life. Say, in a town hall situation where additional resources are provided, like a low sensory room or reading materials with bigger or higher contrasting text, images that are available if needed. It's often really simple stuff. I think that's why I've heard some of the frustration. It's literally just a consideration in a minor accommodation. That's all I got on that one. Obviously my eyes look kind of crazy right now. I'm gonna go finish this eye look off camera and I'll be right back with the outro. All right, here's the finished look. I'm a zombie cheerleader. To check out more about what I was talking about today, I'm gonna link everything below in the description. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you on the next one.